Well, as I mentioned yesterday when speaking to David Maddox from Britain, Thursday London time will see the beginning of the biggest four days of partying that Britain most probably has ever seen, the Platinum Jubilee celebrations. The 70th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth's ascendance to the throne was actually on Sunday, February 6, on the death of her father, King George VI, in 1952. It would be a mistake to suggest that this is simply an exercise in patriotism, nor is it a riotous celebration of the institution of the crown. Rather, it's a celebration of the life and achievements of the individual who wears it. It's been a torrid 18 months for the Queen. The death of her husband, Prince Philip, took a heavy emotional toll, such that her ageing body was forced to work from home. Then about of coronavirus and several family scandals and dramas have not helped. But this weekend, the world will see Queen Elizabeth standing alongside her family, including the next three men in line to be king, Charles, William and eight-year-old George. It's said the nation will spend, in our currency, $1.4 billion on food and drink and themed decorations. There'll be more than 16,000 street parties. Of course, the odious Harry and Meghan have arrived. As non-working royals, they're excluded from any formal proceedings and banned, along with Prince Andrew, from appearing on the balcony of Buckingham Palace after the Trooping the Colour. That ceremony, Trooping the Colour, is a military parade dating back to the 17th century, performed by more than 1,400 parading soldiers, 200 horses and 400 musicians. The guards who take part form one of the oldest regiments in the British Army, the Household Division. They're like the Queen's bodyguards or personal troops, and they've been part of the monarchy since the English Civil War ended in 1660. Now, Colours was the name given to the flags representing different regiments in the British Army. They were used so that soldiers could easily spot their unit when they were on the battlefield so they wouldn't get lost in battle. It was important that soldiers knew which colours belonged to which regiment. Officers would march up and down in front of the troops, hence the trooping, waving their flags, hence colours, so everyone could see which regiment they belonged to. Each year at Trooping the Colour, a different regiment's colours are trooped. At the end of it all, there's a 41-gun salute in Green Park next to the palace and a special aerobatic display by the RAF's display team, the Red Arrows, and it's all over. However, this time the Queen will take the salute from the balcony of Buckingham Palace, understandably because of certain infirmities. Tomorrow, Friday, London time, there'll be a Thanksgiving service at St Paul's Cathedral, the only formal event for Harry and Meghan. As part of the celebrations, there's the Platinum Jubilee pageant, which will tell the story of the Queen's 70-year reign in four acts. And in the first act, Queen and Country, a military parade of 1,750 people and 200 horses, that will include 39 members of the Australian Defence Force. It's said to be one of the largest military spectacles in modern history. Then there is the carnival finale, featuring thousands of people, including Ed Sheeran, Sir Cliff Richard, puppet corgis, and a giant 3D bust of the Queen, seen by TV audiences across the globe, running into hundreds of millions. At some point, the Queen will be meeting her great-granddaughter and namesake Lilibet for the first time, privately. But the Queen won't be at Epsom on Saturday to watch the derby. She'll watch the races at home. 